Hey, how you doing? Justin here. Today we're going to talk about the benefits of recording yourself. And it could just be like leaning your phone up against the coffee cup and using selfie cam and filming yourself playing a tune. Probably more what I'm talking about here is learning to record on a computer, like record individual tracks and listen back to them, that kind of thing. But first of all, I want to talk a little bit about the benefits of recording and why I think you should get into it. Then we'll talk a bit more about the how. So the first thing is, it is an incredible amount of fun. If you get into a studio recording, you can spend your time making a track, which is kind of like a finite thing. When we practice guitar regularly, it's very incremental, like you get a bit better and then a bit better the next day and a bit better and you don't feel like you're... The benefits aren't as obvious or as immediate, but when you record a song, you've got something. You, you, you spend your time recording and at the end of it, you've got a thing that you made. It, even if it's a video of yourself playing one take on, you know, playing a, a song that you really like and singing, the fact that you will have probably done quite a few takes to get there will give you that real sense of achievement of when you've got the finished product and it's done. Okay, so it's loads and loads of fun. But more than that, it's really beneficial. And by recording yourself, you give yourself the opportunity to become an impartial observer. Because we all kind of feel things are a little different in the moment. There have definitely been times in my life where I've played like a solo and in the moment I didn't really feel like it was working or I wasn't really connected, but listened back and gone, you know, that was all right. And the other way, where I've been in the moment thinking like, oh, this is incredible, I'm the next Jimi Hendrix, and then listened back and gone, oh, <coughs> I think so, mate, it's been a bit rough. So this idea of being able to see yourself back and look impartially is a really, really great thing to have that you can use to improve yourself as a musician, as a guitar player. Some things are going to be really revealing. So the first one usually is timing and time, how well you keep time, particularly if you're recording to a click track or playing along with drums. When you listen back to yourself, you can really hear like, am I rushing? Am I playing too far back? Am I with the beat? Am I sitting great? Am I playing too far? You know, all of those things become really obvious. And it's hard to get that feedback sometimes in the moment. Again, like because we're playing, you can either be like completely lost in the moment, just feeling it all out and not really being aware of it or concentrating too much. There's a happy balance there when you start recording where you need to be playing in time, but not thinking about it, overthinking it and then making it all rigid. So there's like you really learn a lot in the process of doing that. Things like if your chords are a bit fluffy or some of the notes aren't ringing out in the chords as well, that, that one becomes really obvious. Uh, if you're improvising, if you're not leaving enough space or leaving too much or repeating the licks too much or not repeating enough or using too wide a vibrato, all of these things become really obvious when you listen back like it's someone else. Uh, a little tip for you and i give you in advance is that when I record myself, I often record myself back and think, what would such and such say? So I use this friend of mine. I still use the same guy, Reese. I haven't seen Reese for a long time. He's a studio engineer I used to work with quite a lot. And I used to record these parts and go, what would Reese say? And I'd imagine like what he, I'd imagine him listening back to the track and going, yeah, that, uh, you know, that line doesn't fit very well, or you didn't climax it at the right point, or that, that you know, that vibrato wasn't really working or, but, you know, what, th what feedback would he have given me? So it could be an interesting one for you to think of a musician that you respect. And what would they say if they heard that track back? What feedback would they give you? Another one of the great benefits that you get of recording yourself is being able to collaborate online. I know definitely in my forum community, there's a real big scene of that of people. One guy will record a part and then send it off to another girl who'll lay up some tracks there and then send it to another person who'll put some drums on. Then it'll go back to this other person to do some vocals or whatever. It's a, it's a really great kind of way of collaborating and getting to know other musicians where you get that experience of actually what it's like to be a recording artist, but it's just on a completely fun, not at all scary level. That said, you will have to face a little bit of red light fever, which is one of the, another thing to benefit from, the, that feeling of pressure that you get in the moment. It's a little bit like playing live in that you can really kind of, you feel the weight of the moment and you know that you've got to deliver it right this time. Like you've hit record, right, it's recording, I've got to do it right now. You know, that we call it red light fever. It happens, I guess, sometimes with uh, making a YouTube video, but less often. For me, it's more like a, a recording or a high pressure live situation that, I, that you start to feel a little bit nervous and heart's racing a bit faster. You get used to it the more you do it, for sure. So that's one of those things, you know, it's beneficial to have some experience of recording and getting used to what that feels like to have a surge of adrenaline. It'll help you with if you ever play live or if you end up recording some stuff on your own as well. 
And lastly, if you're into songwriting, it can really bring your songs to life. So rather than just having an acoustic guitar and playing along, if you can learn to record into a, you know, into software and you can add drums and bass and strings and keyboards and mix it and add different vocal effects and layer up the voice and add backing vocals, you know, that, that tune that you had where you were just playing on your own suddenly can become like a whole track. Now, it does take a bit of time and effort, okay? There's some incredible advances in technology in the last 10 years or whatever that have made it easy for people with very little experience to make actually a pretty great sounding track. Uh, so it is something you should, I definitely would encourage you to, to explore, but it is gonna take up some time, possibly some money. Uh, it's a bit of a pit, the, it, it, once you get into recording in that like you can start off with really basic gear and then you decide that you need a new microphone then you decide you need a new speaker and then you need a new preamp and you need a new this and a new that but really with the way tech is right now you can do an awful lot with just a guitar and a computer and possibly an interface so let's have a quick talk about the stuff that you need to get going into recording yourself properly so to start recording you definitely could just be using your phone and recording a layer and record, trying to record another layer or making one track, one pass of a video of you playing or an audio of you playing and singing a song or whatever. That, so that's recording and that'll give you a lot of those benefits on the, you know, on feedback of being able to listen to yourself. So don't discard that. But if you want to get more into kind of, you know, like a recording studio kind of effect where you can record multiple layers and adjust the, the parts and cut between them and that kind of thing, the first thing that you're going to need is software. So you're going to need a computer of some sort, obviously, but you're going to need some sort of music software. We call it a DAW, a D-A-W, which stands for Digital Audio Workstation. Now, if you've got an Apple computer, they ship free with GarageBand, which is absolutely incredible bit of software for learning to record. It really is. I, I, I still go like, I can't believe all of this stuff's just built into the computer for free. It's really dead easy to use. There's lots of tutorials around that'll guide you through the process, but a lot of it's quite intuitive. And that's free. So the software is free, but you have to have an Apple computer, which are expensive computers. So you're kind of paying for it one way or another, I guess. But that would definitely be what I'd recommend as a starting point if you've got an Apple computer. Um, occasionally they do sales on Logic Pro X, which is the professional uh, recording software that Apple produces as well. It only works on Apple computers. It's what I use. It's what I'm recording this lesson with right now. Uh, and it's incredible. It's like fully featured, full recording studio situation. Uh, the other famous one is called Pro Tools, which I used exclusively up until maybe five years ago or something. Um, and it's incredible, but it's, I, I don't think it's as friendly for beginners. It definitely doesn't have as many features as Logic Pro X. So that would be my recommendation, would be starting for free on GarageBand, maybe moving to Logic Pro X. Relatively inexpensive compared to a lot of the other uh, tools as well. If you've got a Windows computer, the free software that everyone raves about is called Audacity. Now I haven't used it. It is available for Mac, I've just noticed, and I will check it out a little bit more myself for Mac. Uh, pretty confident with my logic skills already, not sure I've got time to learn another program, but it has a huge fan base. It's extremely popular and the feature set looks quite incredible. And again, it's completely free open source software. So that's definitely probably your best starting point if you wanna get into recording on a PC. In order to get audio into your computer, you're going to need an audio interface. These would usually connect to your computer via a USB cable, and that is what you would plug a microphone into or plug your guitar into, and it's also what you would plug headphones into to hear back the audio. You could listen back on your computer speakers, I guess, but that probably won't sound very good. Now, there are a load of different audio interfaces available with varying features. As a beginner, you probably only need two channels in and two out, so two in, two out. Because technology changes so fast, I'm going to put my recommended products over on the website rather than trying to explain them all now because it'll date this video very, very quickly. But you just need a simple audio interface for two in, two out that'll take a microphone, preferably a thing called Phantom Power, which would drive a nice microphone if you upgrade to one later on. Uh, there are very simple budget devices you can get that just plug a guitar in. But... If you're gonna get into it, I think that the budget audio interface are not particularly expensive, and then you can get a microphone in. And a microphone in is a really good thing to have uh, because it'll not just do voice, but it'll do acoustic guitar. Which leads me to the next thing, which is a microphone. Microphones, again, range from like, I don't know, $50 to $50,000, right? You can spend a lot on a microphone or a little. If you can afford it, 
there's a, a type of microphone called a large diaphragm condenser microphone, which is what I'd recommend. The brand Rode make really good budget microphones. Uh, it's the, my first uh, large diaphragm condenser was a Rode mic. Really great bang for buck generally. I don't have a deal or any sort of relationship with them at all, uh, but they're just really good. So as a brand that might be worth checking out, but you have to think a little bit about your budget there because you could spend half the price of a Rode and get a, a microphone that probably isn't going to be as good by any stretch, but you could, you know, by the same rights, you could spend a couple of thousand pounds and get yourself a, a, an incredible microphone. So a little bit, it depends on your budget. The road things, you know, maybe a couple of hundred dollars would get you a really nice microphone that'll do you a really long time. Again, recommendations will be over on the website. I should point out that plugging in an acoustic guitar is never going to get you the best sound. There's technology around that's making it better now, but a microphone with a nice placement is always going to sound better than trying to plug your acoustic guitar in. So getting the microphone that's suitable for voice as well as acoustic guitar would be a really great idea. If you only play electric guitar, there's less of a call for that. You can plug the guitar straight into an interface, usually sometimes directly into your computer. And there's amazing guitar software around now that will transform the sound of your plugged in electric guitar into almost anything. Uh, nearly all of the time when I'm doing these lessons, I use a thing called a Kemper Profiler. Uh, that would be out of the budget for most beginners, but it's an incredible thing. Sounds like almost any amplifier. Um, but a lot of the software now that's built in, even the stuff built into GarageBand and Logic, it sounds pretty incredible. Like, and, and you can buy add-ons from a lot of different companies that, that sound really, really good and come with all of the different effects to explore and all of that. So um, when it comes to electric guitar, you kind of got an easier ride. Most of the software will be built in, but you can buy add-ons if you want. For acoustic guitar, you almost certainly want to get yourself a microphone. Now, there's one other thing that's actually really important, which is headphones. Whatever you do, don't try and use Bluetooth headphones, okay? Or, or, you know, even if they're big over the ear things or earbuds or whatever, don't get them if they're not connected because there's a latency, which means the delayed, a delay in sound. So if you're trying to play along with the drums, the drums get played, it takes a few milliseconds before it gets to your ear and then you record and it goes in and it's always gonna be late. So when you listen back, it won't sound in time. You might have been playing perfectly in time with the thing that went in your ears. But by the time you listen back to it, it won't sound in time and that'll be disappointing. So get yourself some headphones with a cable attachment. That's a really good thing. If you can, I'd get a style called a closed back, which means that when you put the headphones on, the sound doesn't bleed out very much. Now, usually when you're recording, you put the headphones on, say you're doing an acoustic guitar, you don't want to hear the click track or the drums or anything like that in the microphone. You only want to hear the guitar. So that's why it's important that you use headphones that are closed back so the sound doesn't bleed out of the headphones and into the microphone. Um, this is mainly because when you want to treat the microphone or adjust the volume with it later, you just want that guitar on its own and not any other interference from other instruments. There are a couple of other accessories which you're going to find pretty helpful. One would be a microphone stand. Actually, it's probably more than just like might be helpful. If you're going to get a microphone, you need a microphone stand. I wouldn't buy the cheapest one. There's a great saying, buy cheap, buy twice. Well, definitely with microphone stands, that seems to be the case. Um, I really like a German brand called K&M, uh, but they're quite expensive, like definitely at the high end of microphone stands, but I've never had one break ever. They've, all of the ones that I've bought, I've still got. Lost one, I think, but I've never had one get damaged. Whereas cheaper ones I see get damaged all the time on my workshops. Their legs bend up or they don't stand up properly anymore or they, whatever, that, you know. So I wouldn't buy the cheapest stand. Same with a cable, right? I wouldn't buy the cheapest cable. You don't need to go and buy the, you know, super duper oxygen free Megami thing for 500 quid. That would be a ridiculous waste of money. But don't get the cheapest cable either. You know, I, I often think that the, the best approach to looking for it is to buy the best you can afford and look after it. You know, I think that's a really good approach to buying stuff for the music here. And if you look after stuff, you can always sell it again later. Maybe not cables, but most other stuff will retain its value. And the last thing that you need, which is in some ways the most important, is knowledge of how to use that stuff. Now, there are lessons around. I've got a, a new production series on my website hosted by my assistant, Adam. I'm looking at doing some more things as well. I have a beginner's guide to GarageBand as well already. Um, there's plenty of information around, 
But a lot of it is just having some fun with it at the early stages. It's literally figuring out how to record your guitar, figuring out how to make a drum loop or how to make the drums go around, and then practicing playing with the drums. It's very satisfying, just that experience and learning from the, you know, am I, play, am I playing in time with the click? Am I speeding up? Am I slowing down? How's it work? How's my tone? How can I improve my tone? Those notes are ringing out, they shouldn't be. All of those things that you can start to work on. As you develop and you start going, yeah, this is cool. Okay, I'm going to try programming some bass now. Uh, you can usually use drag and drop, like use a, a mouse to create one, or you might get a little MIDI keyboard so you can actually play a little bass line or play a keyboard pad or whatever. There's a lot of things to learn here. It's almost like having a new instrument to learn. That, you know, you're starting from the beginning of a new journey, but it's one that can help you on your guitar journey so much. You'll learn an, an awful lot about layering, about tracking, about your playing, finding mistakes, dealing with pressure. There's so many benefits to learning to record yourself. It's one of the things that I'm so glad I stumbled into as a teenager was I got into this little scene where I was playing on a few you know, jingles and stuff like that and playing on other people's records. And it really fo focused me in on what I was playing and taught me more than I would have got if I'd spent 10 years in my bedroom. So the sooner you get into recording yourself or, and, and or sharing it with other people, the better. I think it's a really incredible experience. So over on the website, I'm going to add a list of my recommended devices at a budget, mid and high level. I'll put down the stuff that I'm using on my day to day as well. Although again, for beginners, I wouldn't go buying the best stuff straight away. Oftentimes it's got more complicated things that will make it harder to use at the early stages. You're better off buying stuff that's really simple and basic to begin with, learning what it is that you need and what things you would like, and then stepping up. You might lose a little bit along the way if you buy one preamp and then you sell it and you buy the next one up and each time you step, you lose a little bit of money. But in a lot of ways, it's better because you'll be upgrading to the things that you need and that you like rather than trying to buy super expensive right at the beginning. I've seen it a load of times with more wealthy students buying like a home studio of stuff that's, you know, $10,000 worth of stuff. And it's just a really bad idea. You're better off starting with simple two in, two out interface, a, a decent microphone, microphone stand, cable, headphones, and then learning a whole heap from that. And then thinking about what stuff you want to upgrade as you go along. Uh, as usual, if you've got any questions, always happy to try and answer as many as I can. I really hope you enjoyed this lesson and it inspires you to start recording yourself. As always, I really appreciate your support. Hitting that subscribe button, you'll get notified, of course, when I've got new lessons on recording or lots of other stuff coming up as well. Always appreciate your slap on that like and let me know in the comments how you go on and if you're doing any recording, what gear have you loved and what have you not? I'll see you for plenty more lessons very soon. You all take care of yourselves. Bye bye.